Hello everyone and welcome back to The Interview. I'm your host, Susan Lee MacDonald. Today, I'm in the Gangnam area of Seoul, Korea, in the Merck Korea offices, ready to meet our guest, the president of Merck Korea, Jürgen Koenig. Let's go meet him today. Hello. Hi, Welcome to Merck. Oh, thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Oh, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Merck is one of the world's oldest global healthcare companies. In Korea, Merck is known especially for its liquid crystal for LCDs. Unlike most chemical companies, Merck strives to create eco-friendly products. The company has become one of the most successful foreign companies to expand into Korea, thanks to Merck Korea CEO Jurgen Koenig. Koenig is an innovative CEO who eliminated honorific titles, allowing for egalitarian communication between employees of different ranks. His emphasis on teamwork has led him to spend time with his employees, drinking tea or cooking together. Koenig also spends time giving back to society, enjoying culture through projects like creating a calendar with Korean artists and giving speeches at universities. Jürgen Koenig hopes to stay connected not only to his employees, but to the passions and dreams of young people everywhere. Join me, Susan Lee MacDonald, and learn more about Koenig's business philosophy, the Merck way of putting development before profits, on this week's The Interview. So, we have also one uh, coffee place. Oh, a we little call cafe. It a small canteen, oh, okay. yes where our colleagues can talk. It is here. Hello. 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 People can come here, have a coffee, make mm -hmm. themselves. Yes. And we have also our uh, news here. You oh, can see look. a lot of news cuttings. Yes, I see a lot of different articles. This, most of them are related to the launch of our book, uh -huh. The Merck Way. I see. When the head of the family Otto Starenberg Haferkamp visited us, mm -hmm. and then we had also one uh, press conference, uh -huh. and uh, you can see the different kind of uh, focus on the mm -hmm. article. Uh, topic was, of course, family business. I see, huh? Yeah, wow. very hot topic in Korea. Definitely. We follow Koenig to a different place. What is this wall? You will see here oh, where our history started in ah. 1668. And even the different kind of logos oh, which wow. the company has. You will see the very old logo Merck, then the change, the seal of Merck. Wow. Uh, you can see it step by step how this has been changed. So it's what we the call the historical mural of uh, Merck. Nice. So this is the entire history of yes. Merck on the walls. And also the logos, how they have mm -hmm. changed uh, till to the current logo, the I Merck see. logo. Wow, that's really nice. Wow. Well, I definitely want to ask you more about the history of, of Merck, and especially Merck in Korea, as well as uh, you too. We so. do it later. Okay, that sounds great. And on oh, this side this. here, you have uh, uh, our uh, last three years calendar, uh, the latest this. one, 2012. Beautiful photos. They are, the, they are not photos. These are paintings. Oh, these are paintings. These <gasps> are paintings. It looks like yeah? a photo. That's incredible. It's not. It's not. And uh, they are, from size-wise, mm -hmm. taller than me. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, you can see the beautiful mm -hmm. details on the paintings. Month, September, we have mm -hmm. this one here. And this is here exactly taller than me. It's fantastic. It's impressive. That's incredible. And if you see it this live and had a chance to see this mm -hmm. painting, it's really fantastic. Wow. The details, uh, how much details you have it in each part of the mm -hmm. handbox. So, my Hello. assistant, Sunny. Hey, so, please. Okay. 
Well, look at this on this door. I love how you have this. I'm going to ask you a little bit more about this later. We can talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, and look at all these flags. My goodness, are these places that you've uh, traveled or? Uh, no, no, there's a history behind. Uh -huh. uh, link to myself. Okay. So we can also talk about this in more details. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. You know, I'm looking around and I see that you've got some artwork and um, I wonder what story you have behind that one? Well, each piece has a story, but the story is very easy. was the first painting painted by my mother when she Your was 16 years, when she was 16 years old. Oh. And I was lucky I got it. That's great. <laughs> she was only 16 when she did this? Yes, yes. And it's always in my office uh, mm. since my first job. I'm mm -hmm. carrying on with me from place to place. Yeah. So it's like your mother is with you, you have family with you, of course. wherever you go. Of course. Wonderful. Jorgen, uh, thanks so much for bringing us into your office. And I know that the guys have to get set up with the cameras and everything for our interview. So um, I'll excuse myself while they come in and you know, get Thank you very up. much. Okay. To be here. Thank you. <laughs>so now we're sitting down and after the nice tour of your office uh, i'm excited to start the interview portion thank you very much <laughs> Susan, for having me here oh well thank you so much Jurgen, for bringing adidang into your office yeah you are the first we're bringing in really <laughs> oh really. i feel very privileged <laughs> exactly you are <laughs> thank you so much Jurgen, you have been in korea for the past four years yes correct and how do you find being in korea it's very different from brazil and germany yes well for us my wife myself it was extremely easy mm. and it's a very funny story because one of our best friends in our previous home country which was pakistan mm -hmm. uh, was uh, uh, consul general of korea Aha. in karachi and we used to play golf meaning our wives play golf yes. and the husbands walk behind <laughs> uh, trying to hit the balls. And That's we have been three, funny. the Korean Consul General and the British Deputy High Commission. Mm -hmm. And of course the ladies playing very well mm -hmm. and we talking, talking, talking about business, politics, economy. And he huh. loves to talk about Korea. Mm. And, so the, and I talk about Brazil yes. and the British about Scotland. Mm -hmm. So uh, we knew everything about the three places. So the wow. day when the company called me and said, would you consider to go to Korea, yes or no? And I said, okay, let me answer only in a uh, couple of hours because my wife is on the golf course now yeah. and playing a <laughs> tournament. <laughs> if oh, I she's call a big golfer then. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then uh, it was very easy. She said to me, let's go. Mm. There was no uh, reason to come before to see the county because mm -hmm. uh, our friend Kim told us everything. Wow. And when we arrived, it, it was exactly mm -hmm. as he told us. Wow. There was nothing wrong. So when he told you about Korea, what do you remember him telling you and what was your impression when you first got here? I remember he always said, lovely people, mm. very nice people, friendly people. Mm -hmm. And we always compare the Koreans with the Brazilians. Uh -huh. They're very similar. Oh, in what ways? Yes. They are very open, mm -hmm. very communicative, mm -hmm. lovely people. Mm -hmm. So it was for us the first impression is that Kim, he was right. Well, it sounds like you were able to travel to Korea prior to actually traveling here, and that yes. seems to have influenced your decision to come here. Exactly. Wonderful. It was very easy. Wonderful. Well, we are very happy to have uh, you here in Korea because you have done some very amazing things here in the company as far as I know. And one of those things is that you have gotten rid of most of the honorifics in calling people's titles. Uh, for example, in Korea, if you're you know, Mr. Kim and you're the director, uh, you'd be you know, Kim Isha-nim. Uh, but you've done away with a lot of that and even for you, most people would normally call you, you know, 사장님 or 대표님, but uh, you've chosen just to do Kerik uh, Nim. And why is that? And, and what's your understanding of Nim? Yes. Uh, first, it's not only my work, we've done it as a team. Uh -huh. So the management uh, together decided and also implemented. We mm -hmm. create a task force team uh, mm -hmm. to help us on the implementation and also to choose the way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, what I observed at the beginning for our company, yes that the Korean titles, they have been handling the communication. 
uh, this is why we decided let's give it up mm -hmm. and let's choose a way which is respectful mm -hmm. and respect is one of our six values okay. how we can address to each other mm -hmm. but making it sure that everybody is comfortable I see. this is why we choose the nim as mr or mrs mm -hmm. is a respectful way mm -hmm. to address so we call we call me for example König nim mm -hmm. so basically no one in the company calls each other by anything other than just you know like Kim Nim or something yeah. Nim. Sometimes they are very close. They call okay. it only by the first name, depend okay. on the relationship of the employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also colleagues and even mm -hmm. uh, managers. They call me only König. Mm -hmm. So we have my direct subordinates. They call me only Jürgen. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a different way to do mm -hmm. it. But if you uh, don't know how to call the other person because you're new to the company, mm -hmm. we choose uh, Nim. What we have, it is of the business cards, on both sides, on the English and mm -hmm. on the Korean side, we have only the English job title. I see. Huh. So we have, for example, the head of pigment and cosmetics mm -hmm. or the head of uh, liquid crystal marketing and mm -hmm. sales, uh, the head of uh, uh, sales uh, mm -hmm. of one unit. Mm -hmm. So this is how we put it on both sides mm -hmm. and not more even translation mm -hmm. or Korean titles. Interesting. We have nothing against Korean titles. I yeah. always make it very clear. Mm -hmm. It was not working in our company because we are promoting the open communication, mm -hmm. we are promoting the freedom of expression mm -hmm. and we want people to be creative. Yes. And this was uh, humbling this mm -hmm. communication and creativity in our company. You know, I think that for any company to have better communication between employees uh, and the employers and between managers and, uh, and the regular staff is so important for productivity, for just general happiness within the company. And that's so unusual, especially in a Korean company where the language itself, it's uh, structured in a way where depending on how old you are, uh, how young that other person is, the language and the words and the grammatical structure, the vocabulary, everything changes. So you know, I know that other companies have attempted to do this in Korea but failed. And I'm curious how you're able to sustain this. I would say not to fail. Uh, a few, they mm -hmm. have been successful mm -hmm. and they have it implemented also. Mm. Uh, depends on how it's done. It mm -hmm. takes also time. Mm -hmm. I will not say that everybody in the company uh, has changed. Mm -hmm. We have a few Mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. even with the problems to mm -hmm. call another one by NIM mm -hmm. and they are too much focusing on the Korean title because yeah. they are extremely status oriented mm -hmm. and we know that we are in the status oriented society mm -hmm. Korea is extremely status oriented but uh, it's not what is working for our company wow. we know it's take time mm -hmm. but we are helping them mm -hmm. we are uh, uh, talking to them and even the colleagues mm -hmm. and the day will come they will also see mm -hmm. it will be not more necessary to have Korean titles. We spoke to even Korean sociologists mm -hmm. at the universities, mm -hmm. from two of them, and they told us that in 20 years, we will not have more Korean titles. Mm. If you see how global Korea is becoming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this kind of title is not more fitting in, mm -hmm. in the global operation mm -hmm. conglomerates. Mm -hmm. So we have many Korean companies with fabrics in uh, South America mm -hmm. and Europe. Do you believe they have Korean titles there? Mm. I'm sure not. <laughs> well, I really think that, uh, that some of the thinking that has to go behind uh, making that decision um, is what has allowed you to just even stay here and have uh, such great rapport with the people that you work with. Uh, I know that some of the people that you work with seem to be very uh, excited to have you here. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> And we didn't pay them separately. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what are some of Merck's most popular products here in Korea? Uh, I'm not here to make marketing, but <laughs> we, are, we are in the pharmaceutical area, mm -hmm. uh, we are in the chemical area. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the chemical area, we are here in performance materials mm -hmm. as well as in what we call Merck Millipur mm -hmm. division. 
In performance materials, we are well known as a local researcher and producer mm -hmm. of liquid crystal, mm -hmm. which That's we the all LCD, use. Right? Exactly, the liquid crystal is an invention of Merck. Mm -hmm. Liquid crystal was invented over 100 years ago mm -hmm. by Merck. At that time, there was a product mm -hmm. which a researcher found out with certain properties, mm -hmm. but no application. Huh. So the first application came with the small Tamagotchis. Okay. It's not from your time, <laughs> but the Tamagotchis. And then uh, later on, the displays and watch displays, yes. small displays, the Game Boys. Mm -hmm. And then now you have uh, the huge TV screens, uh, yes. even 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an invention, like we from Merck. We have all the uh, pigment and cosmetics mm -hmm. where we are operating in certain niches only. Mm -hmm. And then we have also the pigments for the security. Uh -huh. For example, for bills. Okay. Well, many central banks use it for the printing of the bills. Really? Don't ask me if under the 50,000 Korean one bill our pigments are available or not. Uh, mm. because, <laughs> we, because we have uh, confidential agreements with all our customers. I see. But we never disclose in which country we are okay. delivering our pigments for you the security But you can area. tell me, like in my ear. Later one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. And uh, uh, this is in the area of pigment uh, cosmetics in the liquid crystal. Mm -hmm. We have also products mm -hmm. in uh, what we call performance materials, photovoltaic and solid state lighting, mm -hmm. uh, OLED. We have an uh, OLED application uh, lab here in Korea also established. Besides this group of uh, performance materials, yes. we have the called Merck Millipur. Yes. I just uh, went yesterday to the Bio Korea, mm -hmm. the huge uh, fair here in Korea mm -hmm. at Kintex, uh, where we are promoting our products mm -hmm. uh, for all the areas in mm -hmm. the area of formulation, quality, mm -hmm. downstream and uh, upstream for the biotech industry. Mm -hmm. This means Merck is a perfect partner for the new upcoming biotechnology industry in Korea. Yes. This is a second uh, division where we have also laboratory chemicals. We yes. have uh, lab water filtration systems mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, a product for the bioscience, for mm -hmm. example. And then we have the pharmaceutical part, mm -hmm. which we call the division uh, called uh, Merck Serono. Yes. Uh, with all our prescription-based products mm -hmm. in the therapeutic areas like oncology, cardiovascular, mm -hmm. diabetes, uh, growth hormones, uh, fertility, fertility, and so on. Wow. Where we are also growing very fast. Merck in Korea has a couple of uh, very important uh, lab facilities. Tell us a little bit about the R&D facilities here. We are very proud yeah. to have it because we have been in Korea over 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have a production facility for liquid crystal mixtures. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, one half year ago uh, uh, inaugurated our new R&D mm -hmm. facility. It's the really advanced. state of the art as far as I yes, hear. Yes, it is. It is really fantastic. It's in Piontech, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful building where we have all our R&D mm -hmm. uh, facilities. And last year we established there the first OLED application uh -huh. lab outside Germany. Mm. So we're very proud that we have been the first county allow it, but it was a huge of fighting with the headquarters. How did they decide to have it in Korea as opposed to some other country? Why Korea? Um, we prove it that Korea is the right uh, county to be invested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you see uh, all the ongoing investments in Korea, mm -hmm. the high tech, mm -hmm. the change, the, fa the fast change of technologies mm -hmm. globally. So for us, it's the uh, right country to be. Mm -hmm. And the major players, global players, are also here. Mm -hmm. So it was, at this point, easy to yes. establish. But this reminds me once, uh, when I was in, in Germany, mm -hmm. I had an interview with a journalist of a famous German newspaper. Yes. And then she asked me, uh, when you are talking about Korea, what you will think, first of all, and then I answered without thinking, it's a wonderful test market. Mm -hmm. And then we debated, I believe, really 15 minutes huh. on the subject. And she was really fighting with me. Mm -hmm. How you can say a test market is only a peninsula. It's mm -hmm. only 15 million, uh, 50 million inhabitants. Mm -hmm. It's not. And then I said, talk, 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 talk. And, on, and I said to her, look, how long do you have your mobile phone? And she typical, very tall German, mm -hmm. very proud set, three years. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, and a Korean will never have it more than six months. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so this is why Korea is a perfect test market because each Korean yes. want to have the latest futures, mm -hmm. the latest models, mm -hmm. applications, and they want to test it. Mm -hmm. Always. So the perfect test market. High tech driven country. Absolutely. Now you're gonna I'd like to ask you about some of the kind of hidden things that people may not know about uh, the Merck company in Germany, um, some of the history. Now, in addition to doing the liquid crystal display, the LCD, and some of the um, cardiometabolic and uh, ontological type of uh, pharmaceuticals, um, your company has a history of having some very controversial uh, types of pharmaceuticals. For example, when opium was kind of uh, really in vogue way back in the day um, and uh, morphine was extracted from or opium, Merck was the one <laughs> that actually carried morphine throughout the entire world. Isn't that correct? Yes, yeah. correct. And uh, then, not only that, from my other research, um, Sigmund Freud was a big fan of helping to develop cocaine that Merck developed, isn't that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you guys made uh, morphine available, uh, cocaine available, and ecstasy. Yes. <laughs> so, so with that type of history, um, clearly Merck has had a huge impact on the world. What do you say to, to people who might say, you know, oh my goodness, that's a company that created cocaine and, and morphine and ecstasy. What do you say to that? Look. Uh, Whenever I see a terminal patient mm -hmm. for who there is no more solution, mm -hmm. I always say, thanks God that we have morphine, mm -hmm. that Merck has done f something in this uh, way. And I remember it because uh, my mother passed away three years ago mm -hmm. and she was on the end a terminal patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother is also a, a medical doctor and mm -hmm. he also told me, thanks God, mm -hmm. there was one company called Merck mm -hmm. and we can give her now morphine mm -hmm. without she was knowing it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I'm very proud mm -hmm. that I work for a company mm -hmm. who has developed this kind of product mm -hmm. but always following a code of conduct mm -hmm. and always following certain values. Mm -hmm. So it was not a way that it was created, developed mm -hmm. and given free of charge on the street for the kids mm -hmm. in front of the schools. Mm -hmm. No, it was always done with responsibility mm -hmm. and with the respect mm -hmm. to the society, mm -hmm. to the patient. Do you think that the people who initially created cocaine and ecstasy from within Merck could ever have imagined that there would be such a big problem with cocaine and ecstasy nowadays? I think for each researcher, mm -hmm. they are not thinking on the consequences. Mm -hmm. But I think the company mm -hmm. has the responsibility mm -hmm. always to follow rules and regulations mm -hmm. and to make sure that the application is properly done. Mm. And on this point, I can say Merck has always done it properly. Mm -hmm. Merck has always followed and has always worked close to the governments mm -hmm. and has always contributed even very often to create rules mm -hmm. and regulations mm -hmm. in countries to mm -hmm. make sure that mm -hmm. the product will be properly used. I know that when my mother was pregnant with me and she was delivering me, um, she always tells me the story how she was in labor for over 16 or 18 hours and that it was morphine <laughs> that actually helped her <laughs> to get through uh, giving birth to me. So I guess I have to say thank so you to, you to came, your company. You came to the world very high, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, very excited and I think I'm uh, still a this little bit This is why you are a happy person. There you go. <laughs> Jürgen Koenig, CEO of Merck Korea, has come to speak with students at Yonsei University. Koenig is known for his eagerness to interact with students at universities around the world. What will he be speaking about today? Uh, we consider ourselves as a family company, global company, but working on a different way with uh, a set of values and uh, being a family-owned company uh, over 344 years, I think we have a couple of messages to deliver for the younger generation. Today, Koenig's talk focused on the central aspects of the Merck way, courage, success, respect, responsibility, wholeness, and transparency, and how these factors make up his business philosophy. Again, this is the Merck way.
After the lecture, the floor is open to students for questions. The students take the opportunity to ask questions they've always had about business and management. CU has introduced uh, um, the company to us and uh, I have know something about the spirit of the company, um, persistence, innovation and so on. Uh, because Merck has a two years history of, of, of being in establishment. So that teach me about always chasing your dreams and not giving up, giving up halfway. Jürgen Koenig is happy to take time out from his busy schedule to meet with young students in Korea. It seems clear that this passion for working with people and seeking answers through discussion was the heart of Merck's secret to its long history of success. Why do you think Merck is so successful here in Korea? Or would you consider Merck being successful here in Korea? You are saying it to me. <laughs> uh, what I can only mention is that we are a great team. Mm -hmm. I really believe in our uh, team. Uh, we are working hard together. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, for example, in our R&D center, only mm -hmm. Koreans. We're very proud mm -hmm. about this. Only Koreans, so no Germans. They are in the R&D. Uh -huh. We have uh, only Koreans. Interesting. They have been also abroad for a couple mm -hmm. of years, a few of them. And at the moment, we have also Koreans outside. This mm -hmm. is normal. But uh, people always believe that we have uh, a lot of uh, crazy Germans working our r and d <laughs> It's not the case. We uh -huh. have Korea, and Korea is developing high level of education mm -hmm. and is delivering high level of people. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to mm -hmm. bring people of mm -hmm. them uh, from, from Europe or from US. Mm -hmm. So this is we are very proud about this. So you have high standard of education. Yes. You have people here available, mm -hmm. not only in R&D, mm -hmm. but in all other areas. Yeah, uh, in the area of uh, medicine, in the ch chemicals. Mm -hmm. So it's a place where you can find mm -hmm. your employees with high standards. Interesting. When you decided to come to Korea and uh, be the president of, of Merck here in Korea, did you imagine that the company would grow quite as it has uh, since you, your arrival here? Yes, I was sure and I was also sure that in different periods we will uh, have uh, a good time. Mm. I'm saying this because we have a great team here. It mm -hmm. was always a great team. Mm -hmm. Not always. I'm here. In the past, the company mm -hmm. always had high growth rates. Uh, I can see in the last year, after we implemented a very specific strategy for the pharmaceutical market, mm -hmm. we are also growing very fast. Mm -hmm. We have built up a good team in the, this area, and uh, now we're doing also very well. Uh, I was sure that the company will do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember in 2008, 2000, I came, uh, and I have been a fighter because Brazilians are fighters to yes. survive. <laughs> and there's no way to lay down and to cry. <laughs> when this crisis started, I was in one of the flights back from, from Darmstadt, and from Frankfurt, and then uh, on my side was sitting a uh, Korean entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, uh, owner of a factory, mm -hmm. and we have been talking about the possibilities mm -hmm. which we have uh, here in Korea with the crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few seats behind us, there have been two Germans, mm -hmm. and they have been doing a lot of noise and crazy and crying because the crisis now and how mm -hmm. to do it, mm -hmm. everything will be stopping and mm -hmm. the business will not be. And I observe as that. There's one Korean Brazilian talking about the opportunities. <laughs> and they are only crying and mm. uh, about the crisis. Mm -hmm. So who will come out earlier? It's Korea with mm -hmm. this kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. And Korea in Asia was the first country coming mm -hmm. out, came out from the crisis. Yes. Uh, this has a lot to do with the Korean mm -hmm. spirit. Yes. What you've just mentioned is the Korean spirit of resiliency and their ability to kind of stand back up after having been uh, defeated or um, having some uh, trials. And I know in the 97, what Koreans call the IMF uh, generation, <laughs> when uh, there was a lot of the intervention from outside yeah. to help Korean uh, banks and the financial system. And also uh, several years ago, uh, Koreans just know how to kind of get back up. What do you think in your analysis of uh, your experience here um, shows about the Korean resiliency? It's very easy for me to answer this. But I will answer with a question. Okay. You are very good in Korean. Uh, what is the name crisis in Korean? Wigi. And what means Wigi? We 
-hmm. And ki is a combination of mm -hmm. two words, mm -hmm. danger and opportunity. Mm -hmm. And in how many languages you have this kind of combination mm -hmm. for danger and opportunity as a wiki. Interesting. Yeah, you have it in Korean wow. and Chinese, mm -hmm. but not in many. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one <laughs> why uh, the Korean came out first from the crisis. Huh. It's showing in the language, in the history. Mm -hmm. Korea and Koreans have all been fighting. Mm -hmm. How many invasion the county passed through. Yes. So if you see it, each Korean is a fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He will, <laughs> let's move forward. <laughs> and he will never have time to spend, uh, to cry and mm -hmm. to, no, he will go for the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and very fast. Mm -hmm. This is in the history, in the language, mm -hmm. you see it's a Korean spirit. Fantastic. <laughs> 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 I love your explanation of that. Let's get into your personal life a little bit, um, and because you've uh, told me a lot about Merck. I would like to know about you. Now, you are of German ethnicity, but were born in Brazil. Yes. And so I'm curious, do you consider yourself German, Brazilian? Um, what do you consider yourself? <laughs> <laughs> when we came in, you saw the flex in my office, and yes. you asked me, what about the story of the flex? Mm -hmm. and, um, there are seven flags that are always carrying with me. There's one Brazilian flag mm -hmm. where I was born. Mm -hmm. There's a flag from Germany mm -hmm. because my father was German. Mm -hmm. uh, a flag from Austria because my mother was from Austria. Mm -hmm. So there is a flag from Switzerland because my wife is Swiss. Is a Peruvian because flag because she was born in Peru. Oh my goodness. <laughs> then we have the flag from uh, Germany again, because we spent years in Germany. Mm -hmm. The flag from Pakistan, where we spent 10 years of the life. Mm -hmm. And then a Korean flag, where we have been now for four years. <laughs> so the flag is on the end, the history. Mm -hmm. Well, European parents born in Brazil, and if tomorrow we have a soccer game between Germany and Brazil, it's not a secret. <laughs> I'm for Brazil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. And I'm very happy that mm -hmm. even our sons, both, mm -hmm. they spent only a few years in mm -hmm. Brazil, but they have a strong link to Brazil. Mm. And they will also always put Brazil first on the ranking mm -hmm. when there is a, a mm -hmm. kind of soccer game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, considering yourself Brazilian, um, I'm curious, what was your first language? Portuguese? Was it German? Uh, English? At home, of course, we have been supposed to speak only German mm -hmm. uh, because my parents were afraid that we will not learn the German language mm -hmm. if we start to speak only Portuguese. But of course, with all the neighbors, the friends, was in Portuguese. Yes. Yeah, so it was uh, bilingual education. <laughs> it's normal. Automatically. Yeah, Portuguese, Portuguese and German. I went to the German school, but mm -hmm. always with all the uh, Brazilian program. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. went to a Brazilian university, so it's uh, mm -hmm. normal. So uh, going to a German school, but you played with Portuguese uh, kids, uh, not Portuguese kids, but Brazilian, Brazilian. kids speaking Portuguese. Um, was there ever a time where you felt confused and were speaking German uh, when you're supposed to be speaking Portuguese and vice versa? No, it was at the beginning, I say, uh, there's a very funny story, was my father was too strong mm. with this uh, German speaking, mm -hmm. and we have been supposed not to speak Portuguese at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the servants at home, they came from the south, mm -hmm. they could always speak German. Uh -huh. And so in the house, with all the servants, it was with the gardener, with everybody, mm -hmm. it was only German. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my sister, she's one year older, went to the school, German school, and she came home, and I was, tell me, how is it? it was, I was uh, crazy to go to the school mm -hmm. also and to leave the kindergarten. And then uh, she said, I don't want to go more because there's a teacher, she speaks only Portuguese. And I said, great. <laughs> and then my parents started to have concern. Oh. And so my father terminated all the servants and had hired only Brazilian servants. Oh. So we started to speak only Portuguese with the servant at home. Interesting. And I remember the first dinner mm -hmm. when it was served by the uh, by the Brazilian uh, maid, and uh, then I start to speak with her mm -hmm. perfectly in Portuguese, and my father, his eyes, he wanted to kill me, <laughs> but he was supposed to say nothing, because mm -hmm. just uh, weeks before, 
I don't know what I said during the dinner in Portuguese, mm -hmm. and he slapped me. Oh. Right? <laughs> it was a very German education. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it was, I pay him back. <laughs> <laughs> With your perfect Portuguese. Exactly. Yeah? <laughs> and he uh, was thinking, I'm sure, and I never can forget this image. Mm -hmm. right? uh, how this guy learned? Of course, I took my bicycle, I went to my friends, and we spoke always in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. They've been very neighbors from France, from uh, UK, mm -hmm. from US, mm -hmm. and the only common language which he had was Portuguese. Interesting. But of course we spoke wow. Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> now, what language do you feel more comfortable in when you're talking to your wife? Do you speak? At home, mm -hmm. we do speak Portuguese, my wife, myself. With our uh, sons, uh, normally, currently, they are adults, we speak any kind of language, but when the subject is serious, mm -hmm. they will switch over German because German was the language which was spoken at home in Brazil with them. I see. So the two boys between themselves, they always speak mm -hmm. in German, and uh, but uh, with my wife, I speak Portuguese at home. Interesting. Have you begun to learn any Korean by any chance? Of course, of <laughs> course, so be careful. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's not good as your Korean, <laughs> but I'm always, when I'm uh, in meetings uh, with Koreans, they always ask me, how good is your Korean? Mm -hmm. I said, it's not so good, but be careful, be careful. <laughs> You're going to tell me about your time in Pakistan. You said you were there for about 10 years. Yes. And I imagine that that's where um, you told us that you found out more about Korea with the Consul General there. What was that time like? 10 years is a long period of time. Why did you choose to stay that long? Well, first, I should tell you that um, I spent the first three years for my previous company mm -hmm. and then the last seven years for Merck. Mm -hmm. So I changed in between. I see. Uh, Nevertheless, it was uh, for me an amazing period and for my family. Mm -hmm. I always like to say uh, that I'm very grateful to my family, my mm -hmm. wife and mm -hmm. the kids that they came with me. Mm. So I had always the possibility to have my dreams realized mm -hmm. because my dream was always to be CEO mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the country outside uh, Germany or Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got uh, once this is dream mm -hmm. and this started in Pakistan and later one here in Korea. So I'm living my dreams. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing it only was I have support from the family. Mm. Uh, I know it's not easy for the family, not easy for the wife yes. most probably, uh, always to start from the zero. Mm -hmm. Because my wife is also a professional, she's a translator and interpreter, mm -hmm. and wherever she is in a new country, she has to start again. Mm -hmm. So for me it's easy. I'm mm -hmm. coming, oh, nice office, mm -hmm. right? Uh, assistant is there, yes. it's always done. Mm -hmm. But who will really build up the network, who will build up the home, mm -hmm. uh, and make the home mm -hmm. functional, mm -hmm. is my wife. Yes. Uh, and then on the top, to build up her own life mm -hmm. and her own career, mm -hmm. always. So it's not easy for the for the for the wives, uh, but I've been very lucky on this point. Well, it sounds like your wife is a really amazing woman. She's uh, fluent in what five or six different languages. She's also learning Korean too. Yes. Yes. And do you practice uh, the other languages together? Did you ever learn Urdu? And had you kind of practiced? She together? yes, I'm less, but she <laughs> yes. <laughs> but she went to the market and. Uh, my wife will always make sure that she will not spend too much money with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so she's an excellent bargainer. So it's a, it's a, for this, we need a language. Mm -hmm. right? Given how much your wife has uh, supported you over the years, uh, would you mind taking just a few moments to look into one of our cameras here and to say a little something special to her? Um, I imagine that she can understand English too. So if you don't mind <laughs> not speaking in Portuguese, but maybe saying something to I her. I do not need to say it to the camera <laughs> because I'm saying to her, uh, every day, <laughs> thank you, darling. <laughs> she knows, <Right> there. <laughs> thank you, darling. She, she knows for me every day yes. uh, how grateful I am. How, is how it, lucky I am. How is it that you keep your marriage uh, fresh and alive? It seems like you're still very much uh, you know, in love with her. So, uh, your now, eyes are sparkling when you talk to her. Now you're trying to find out my age. But well, this is a Korean way to ask the <laughs> age of the person. <laughs> <laughs> how long your marriage, when you got graduated, and so on and so on. I have no problem. I'm 58 years young or old, mm -hmm. call it as you want. <laughs> so I have not a problem. Uh, we are married over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. so I found the love of my life. Wow. How did you two meet? Oh, you want to know now too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> we worked in the same company. Uh -huh. yeah? uh, and uh, 
even work with the same company. Mm -hmm. We have been good friends mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But then one day, click, wow. and then we fall in love. But this came uh, much uh, later. And, and years later, you're still together, traveling the world, living in different parts of the world, enjoying new cultures and new foods. Um, you know, it seems like you've got it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. <laughs>I do have a question about your cooking. I hear that you are a huge <laughs> fan of cooking Korean food. Tell me about how that began. Uh, uh, I had a hobby when mm -hmm. I was single. And I used to uh, uh, cook once a week for friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, when I got married, I give it up. It was my wife, I cannot compete with my wife, <laughs> right? <laughs> no way. Oh, really? Yes, it's uh, international cuisine, and mm. then the South American also, and mm -hmm. uh, she will always change a dish every time. Mm -hmm. It's always a surprise because she will never do this dish the same way the huh. second time. Huh. Always she will change something, and this makes uh, amazing. But uh, I had it as a, as a uh, uh, hobby only. I give it up, and then later on, when the sons left the home for to studies, we start to cook together mm. on the weekends on the Sundays. Oh, that's a nice bonding activity. Of course. Yeah. And uh, what I done it when I arrived here in Korea is uh, my team, the executive committee members, they have been to formal, mm -hmm. and so each other on beginning calling by the Korean titles mm -hmm. or by calling Mr. Koenig and mm -hmm. so on so on. I said no way. I invite all of them once uh, for dinner in my home. Mm. And everybody came and let's see what Mr. Koenig will mm -hmm. offer as mm -hmm. a dinner. And then uh, when we had the first drinks round, I said, so guys, now I have good news and bad news. Which <laughs> one you would like to hear first? <laughs> and then let's go for the <laughs> good news. Mm -hmm. And then the good news is that the starter and dessert is ready. I made it. Mm. And the bad news is that the main dish, we will do it together. Uh -huh. I hand over to each of them an uh, apron yes. with the uh, name embroidered, oh, here, nice. but only the first name. Uh -huh. And said, as you must know, the chefs, they used to call each other by the first name without any kind of title. Mm -hmm. And from now onwards, we will do it. And everybody who will miss this will need to pay 1,000 Korean won to a box which will be collected by the CFO <laughs> for charity. That's great. <laughs> so, and then we start to go and I build up eight stash stations in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. The one need to cu cut the onion, the other one the garlic, and so on, so on, so mm -hmm. on. And then we done a wonderful dish. And mm -hmm. the tradition is that whenever we have a change in our executive committee, yes, as one is leaving, one is coming, mm -hmm. then uh, we are cooking together. That's a yeah? fantastic idea. And we idea. done it a couple of times. Uh, we done together European dish, we done a Thai dish, uh -huh. we done a, a Korean dish mm -hmm. also. Uh, every time it's different. Once we decided to get a lesson mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, invited one famous Korean chef mm. to teach us, so we cooked together but with him mm -hmm. and he is, could teach us how to do it, how we should uh, observe any kind of principles mm -hmm. to make it also uh, nice and funny. What is your favorite Korean food then? <laughs> if you had to choose at least I, one. I have it once and I like it, it is not a secret, it's japchae. Uh -huh. uh, why? Uh, not because it's only the glass noodles, but mm -hmm. you can be, as a chef, extremely creative. Mm -hmm. You can do it with meat, mm -hmm. with seafood, mm -hmm. with chicken. You can give uh, Indian flavor, mm -hmm. Italian flavor, French flavor mm -hmm. by putting the French herbs. Uh, you can be extremely creative mm -hmm. with the uh, kind of vegetables which you will uh, uh, cut and put in. Mm -hmm. It was for me one of the dishes which Korea should promote it more internationally mm -hmm. because it's very easy mm -hmm. to adapt to each culture, to each country. Yes. Oh, it's easy, it's moral. Uh, when I open the newspaper, if I hear the news, uh, I think uh, what we need really, it's moral. It's the courage to do the right things, things which we uh, learned and have been taught by our parents. And I am missing them a lot in the global politics, in the global economy. Uh, I think we need a turnaround globally on this subject. 
I'd like to ask you about your interest in the lesser known sides of Korean culture. Tell me about that lesser side of Korean culture that you have kind of fallen for. When we came into my office, you asked about the, the, the paintings, and I just showed you the painting of my mother, and you said, ah, now I know why you <laughs> uh, like art. I believe, yes, uh, it must be uh, because my uh, mother was an artist mm -hmm. and uh, she painted a lot and uh, maybe I got something from this uh, from her. Uh, I like paintings, yes, mm -hmm. we do have at home, uh, I think, uh, I think not, we have paintings from each country where we lived, we have nice. also Korean paintings at home, mm -hmm. a couple of uh, uh, paintings from Pakistan, mm -hmm. from Europe and from, uh, from Brazil. And I always take them, them. I need them mm -hmm. for my daily life. Mm -hmm. So I have not a second home and uh, where I can enjoy it once when I'm retired. I mm -hmm. need to have my paintings daily mm -hmm. and enjoying them mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Uh, what we done, I, when I came to Korea, was asked my colleagues why we cannot have a corporate calendar and uh, why we cannot do it because I done it in the previous company. Yes. Also. And I said, let's see it and let's work on this. And then we start to look for paintings. Mm -hmm. And um, I really went to each and every single gallery, not only in the Insadong area, mm -hmm. but in Sambungdong, in Gangnam. So in all the gallery names, them, I went. Wow. And to see also the different kind. It was really, I will say, nearly one year work on mm -hmm. this. And uh, then uh, I was impressed with one painter, uh, uh, young lady from Busan mm -hmm. and uh, Mrs. O, oh, and then with her we done our first calendar. It's mm -hmm. more naive Korean mm -hmm. paintings, modern paintings. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we distributed this calendar worldwide, everybody asked me, but this is not Korean. It could be in France, could be uh, in US. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, you can see it how international Korea is. Mm -hmm. This was our answer. Mm -hmm. Then we had the second uh, calendar which we launched, was from Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. He is also based in Posong, mm -hmm. close to our factory, uh, with uh, modern art paintings also, mm -hmm. wonderful mix of colors mm -hmm. uh, and giving the right messages. Nice. Uh, this was the second. The third one was suddenly someone said, wow, this one is real Korean. <laughs> When we uh, because use it had more Oriental or uh, Asian images, handbooks, yes, uh, the Korean handbooks, the mm -hmm. ladies from the backside, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody asked me, but why no one face? Mm -hmm. I said, look, it's very easy. You should ask the painter, but this is what I like it a lot, and the painter done it with this proposal. You have the freedom to imagine mm -hmm. the history of the lady mm -hmm. wearing this handbook. I see. Because there is a face behind, there is a, a story behind, mm -hmm. uh, there are characteristics behind, mm -hmm. uh, which you can imagine by yourself. Mm -hmm. And of course, we will launch very soon our uh, fourth calendar. Mm -hmm. I cannot disclose it here, it's a ah. secret, but we are also working on the fifth calendar. Because it takes normally 12 to 18 months from the beginning till the launch of the calendar. Mm -hmm. And they have been very successful in promoting the Korean art, which for us is very important because we are living here and mm -hmm. we want to show how global, international, but also traditional Korea mm -hmm. can be. Fantastic. Now last but not least, as a CEO of a major pharmaceutical company here in Korea, a foreign company here in Korea, what would One you say? One of them, not the major. Yes. <laughs> One of them. One of them. What would you say is uh, a, uh, a strength or several strengths of yours that, uh, that bring something different and fresh into the, um, the, the leadership of your company here? <laughs> I always like to say, uh, do what you like to do mm -hmm. with passion. Mm. And at least I have the opportunity to do it with passion. So mm -hmm. I'm, do, I'm doing what I like to do. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask me to do something else, no, it's really what was my dream and doing, I'm living my dream. Mm -hmm. uh, and with passion. Mm -hmm. Don't do it only on the halfway, mm -hmm. do it totally. Mm -hmm. uh, this is always my recommendation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I talk to the Yonsei uh, students, I also 
rose the question on the end yes. and asked a few of them what kind of dreams you have. Mm -hmm. There was one Chinese, he said, I would like to have a chain of Chinese restaurants. I said, great. There was another one, he said, I want to have a lot of money. I said, good. What do you do with the money? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, think about this. Mm -hmm. It's very important to know mm -hmm. what you want for what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then do it always with passion. I love the idea that you can learn uh, no matter what your status is in society, um, no matter you know what age you are, no matter who you are, that you can always learn from someone. I think that's a great philosophy to have. And I'm sure that that is something that your employees feel. I'm sure that's something that the people who uh, work with you feel. And my guess is that they appreciate that type of attitude because um, it makes them feel important. It makes them feel very strong. And uh, it's uh, not only a, an effective business management strategy, but it seems like it's just very genuine from your heart. <laughs> Thank you. But today I'm also learning from you. Great oh. communicator, of course. So I'm taking also oh my uh, <laughs> lessons uh, home from you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jürgen. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you today, and I know that a lot of our audience members are going to have just uh, you know one more great impression of uh, people who have come to Korea, uh, been successful, and choose to come to Korea because it's it's such an amazing country, and you're definitely one of the biggest examples of that. So thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. You're Thank very you. welcome. Thank you. <laughs>